Um, this is literally the build from what? <laughs> Thursday? A day, yeah, a couple of days. Yeah. Or something. So you're seeing something that's hot off the build machine. Yeah, so this is, uh, like I said, the city of the elite. This is Byzantium. We're going to walk into the main square here. Uh, the orrery in the center there, that's a representation of the colony and all the planets in the colony. Um, but as you walk around, as we, we walk around and look at stuff, you'll notice that on some of the walls there's holes and cracks and grime. Um, from a distance it looks perfect, but even um, Byzantium is starting to show some wear and tear. Um, you can see the facade. Basically, all of this is just built on facades of prepackaged or pre-made, prefabricated housing. Um, but uh, so, it's, but Leonard, it's uh, kind of awkward to walk around with our gun out, right? Oh, yes. Take, put that gun away, Charlie. <laughs> And you have people with you, right? Yes, I do. All right, let's look at our companions. There's Felix, who uh, you might have seen before. And there's Nioka, a big game miner from uh, the Forbidden Planet in Monarch. So we're going to walk around here, and Charlie's going to check out some of the, uh, the architectural details and show how it's not everything that it's cracked up to be. Um, this place has been quarantined because of sprats. Um, over on this other side here, I believe there's a wall where you can see um, the pipes and uh, the guts of the uh, building through through cracks in the walls. And of course, everywhere you look, there are ads for products you can buy and find in the, around the colony. This, this particular colony had 10 different companies found it, so you are exposed to advertisement at all times. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to actually show you part of a little quest here. Uh, Megan's going to rock walk us through it. Um, we've already got the, the the basic beginning of the quest, so she's going to walk us through it from there. Uh, take it away, there, Megan. Um, so we're headed to Odeon Pictures, which is one of the film studios that makes all the propaganda movies um, in the game, which you can see one of the posters there. And one of the directors, Maverick, uh, saw you on the street, and he thinks that you have what it takes to be the next big star for his company. So he really wants you to go in and audition for one of the propaganda movies. So the receptionist can greet you when you come inside. Oh, did you guys want to talk about the poster? Oh, did we say something about the Titus Andronicus poster? <laughs> T Titus Androidicus? Androidicus yes. poster. I just <laughs> featuring Burbage 2000 and 3000. <laughs> <laughs> I just love our movie posters, and obviously we have a lot of Futurama fans on our staff. Yeah, but mostly Tim. <laughs> No, it's, it's a great show. Yeah, so we're going to head upstairs to the audition. And we're going to turn that down slightly. Normally they'd be chatting back and forth. We don't have our voice done yet. <laughs> so we just use the intercom to let them know we're here. And uh, they say, great, come on in. Uh, so they just want to let us know that they're going to be using live weapons in the audition for um, optimal product placement and uh, to add a little bit of realism to it. So. And that sounds good to me. <laughs> I can work with that. Yep. <laughs> Now, what I love here on the right is a set that looks like the monster planet Monarch, which by the time you get here, you will have seen that planet and been there and realized that this set must have been made by somebody who's probably never been there. <laughs> it's very realistic looking. Um, so we're going to head up to our mark. Oh, actually, if you head to the right first, I saw this earlier when I was playtesting it. Uh, I don't know if I made it this, but if you go over to where the set is real quick. Uh, in the right corner. Ah, oh, maybe it's not there. Oh yeah, we added. <laughs> there's a dead Burbage 2000, Burbage 2000. from earlier film. <laughs> I just came across that randomly and was like, oh my gosh. And I'm gonna take a stuff. <laughs> but anyway, okay, so we're gonna go get on our mark. And uh, and and these are real ooh. actors who think that you're also an actor and are following the script. And I'm gonna act with my gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Um, so you're playing the part of an evil captain. Well, actually, no, you're the good guy. You're stopping them from trying to steal all the supplies from the town. <laughs> so 
So you can see a little bit of the mix of the dark and the silly. <laughs> yeah, so I think we'll go with, yeah, you want to go with pirate. the Ufal pirate. <laughs> We're going to ham it up here. <laughs> Quality acting. <laughs> yeah, and your companions will jump in with their opinions on this stuff. I think we should remain stoically silent. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be the strong silent type here. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Don't show off how smart you are. As you said, Charlie, we'll like let our gun ever. do the talking. <laughs> Speaking of guns. Uh, product placement. <laughs> <laughs> Which you can find in the game. Yep. <clears throat> <laughs> and Felix loves mayhem, so he's very impressed by that. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit of, a little bit of humor in this game yeah I, I still laugh at the humor every time I play I like, <laughs> you should read the flavor text on every object exude wordless fury fury <laughs> <laughs> Neoka's not impressed yeah, she didn't grow up on this planet Get to the good stuff. I think it's I think it's time, Charlie. <laughs> All right. So you could play out the quest. Oh wait, go. Oh, ahead. Make your eye twitch. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, make your eye twitch first. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Can't miss that. <laughs> Speechless. <laughs> right. <Our> so <laughs> wait. <laughs> So you could play out the quest normally through dialogue options, but I think we definitely want to go uh, murder crazy. Yeah. yeah, I think it's more more entertaining for this. Yeah. So here goes. It's more authentic. <laughs> <laughs> Safety saw. They got paid to do a job. <laughs> and Maverick Johnson, the director, is uh, he loved the authenticity in your... Uh... Yeah, he's coming up to let you know how your performance was. <laughs> I thought the performance was pretty good. Here's our director. Knowing Charlie, I don't think he's going to live long, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's nice because you're actually rewarded for playing how you want to play. Like, he thought it was great. <laughs> and, uh, I think we should kill him too. I'm just saying. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. Is that his head? Oh, his head just. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it vaporized. And, and we take all this stuff because that's what we do. All right, so now we're going to um, have some fun outside and show these people what we really think of their elite town. Now, during the game, if you're uh, on a regular playthrough, you're unlikely to be fighting in this town, although you can kill everybody and anybody if you want. But we just thought it would be fun to show you what it would like if, if combat actually took place in this beautiful city. But let's be sneaky about it. Let's put our gun away. Yeah, yeah so no one will suspect anything. <laughs> Although Charlie, can you explain some of what we saw, the slowing down of time? Yeah, like that. so uh, tactical time dilation is where we uh, are trying to give opportunities both for people who aren't um, the best shooter players, an opportunity to, you know, in the normal fast-paced uh, gameplay, slow it down a little bit, get their bearings, and then make decisions that actually will help them during combat. Um, we have location-based hits where shooting them in different spots will actually inflict certain status effects, giving you bonuses. So um, as things get extraordinarily difficult, uh, it is a pretty handy tool to have. 
nice gun. <laughs> I might I might take that later. So eventually you need to get into that building, I believe. Now you want to dress the companions appropriately? No, I'm oh, that's I'm, right. I'm, this is a restricted area where we don't have access, but I'm going to just try walking in and see what happens. Well, uh, so off limits, so they don't want me there. I'm just going to ask some questions. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Funny thing, I have one of those. <laughs> but we're not going to give it to him. You could give it to him and bribe your way in that way, but we prefer a more direct approach. Uh, we should flatter him a little bit. He should be promoted. So there is this interrogation system we have in the game using disguises when we do have them equipped, where if you have high enough different uh, dialogue skills, you can talk your way through these uh, through restricted areas. So here's where you actually could give him a grenade launcher. Because <laughs> he really wants one. But uh, let's not do that. We need to equip Felix correctly. I think he's under-armored. All right, let's, uh, let's, go, let's go in here real quick. And, uh, what's, I'm going to put the pink briefcase on his head. He even has a temporary icon. That's how. <laughs> now we're ready to start fighting. That, that oh, helmet. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, <I'm feeling. laughs> that helmet is available for sale in the game at your nearest Spacer's Choice vendor. And uh, we should get stuff uh, started with, uh, with a bang. Let's That's go. Right, let's do it. Or do it to Felix. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Felix, have fun. <laughs> So, Tim, I'm shooting these crazy purple bullets. What are those? Yes, this is a plasma rifle that's been modified to shoot something called N-rays, which, when they hit living people, they make them glow and do N-ray damage to themselves and people around them. It's, a, it's an awesome damage type. Oh, he's already dead. I believe Felix and Noka have been... Oh, this is Neoka. <laughs> <laughs> It, it cuts off a little bit now, but before she does that, she takes a swig off of her flask, so it, it really defines her character well. Yeah. <laughs> she's, now, she's good to have in a pinch. Now we're going to hit things, because hitting yes. things is fun. Yes. <laughs> and this is using the corrosion? So this is our Inferno side that you might have seen from our earlier tra trailers, but uh, this is actually modified to do corrosion damage, and corrosion damage is good for heavy armored things. These mods are also available for purchase at nearby weapons vendors. <laughs> at fine retailers everywhere. But, uh... Yeah, I'm gonna... Don't mind me. <laughs> 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 oh, and civilians, yeah, they... It's okay. Aww. Poor top hat person. We, we could... I believe that man's using a grenade launcher. Yes. Available from Hammersmith. Oh, no, that's... Take that's the oh. ad drone, too. Oh. That's so mean. Charlie, uh, what's that you have in your hand there? Well, this is another one of our science weapons. Um, so we've, we've made some science weapons, and if you don't know what those are, they are some weapons in this universe that aren't quite normal, um, and they all have strange and weird effects. We've talked about the shrink ray before, um, but this one is called the Mandibular Rearranger. Um, <laughs> So, if you're guessing what that does, it rearranges mandibulars. <laughs> <laughs> this was a, a bug in the game. It started as a bug, and we liked it so much, we decided to make a science weapon based around it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this, this nice lady here, we're going to rearrange. So, compared to other melee weapons, 
Um, this one doesn't deal as much damage, but uh, it actually will slow people down, and if you hit them multiple times, it will freeze them. <laughs> <laughs> as well as do some rearranging of faces. And like every science weapon, the amount of that slowdown is proportional to your science skill. So if you want to make a combat character who basically has a high science skill and specializes in science weapons, this is it. It's also funny. We have a science weapon for every weapon type in the game, so you, you, don't, you don't have to be a melee combat character if you don't want to. Let's see, what's the, one we, the other one we showed? We showed the shrink ray. We showed the shrink ray. So you've seen the handheld, one handed gun, and this is the one handed melee weapon. Thanks for your stuff. <clears throat> and uh, let's head into the, uh, the bar here. <laughs> I love the chef bots. They're so cute. Hey! Uh, that looks safe. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, should, should Felix kick someone? Yes. All right. Okay. <laughs> and I'll take your stuff in slow motion. Oh, and they corrode. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I can just go. I can just go around and keep keep doing I mean, stuff. Just, just, we'll kick one more person and then actually yeah. let's have Naoka do something. Okay. And then we'll open it up. Alright. She'll we'll start on Eeny, Meeny, Miny. Oh overkill. Games are supposed to be fun. Charlie's going to do this all day if we let him. We yeah, should probably that's, open that's it up for some Hey, some look! Questions. A flaw! <laughs> oh, what did you get? I don't know. I can't read from here. Oh, canids. oh, because they had a pet canid, and it was oh. gnawing at my ankles. <laughs> I didn't see you. It was kill like that. a teacup size one too, and now you're afraid of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, real quick before we get to questions, can we talk about the flaws since that popped up? Yeah. Well, I mean, what must have happened there is Charlie was getting chewed on by a teacup canid while he was fighting everybody else, <laughs> and it pushed him over a threshold because this is a save game. This occurs in about the middle of the game, so the game is monitoring everything you're doing and, and keeping track of how much damage you take from different things and, you know, how much time you've gotten hurt like or like taken falling damage or anything like that so occasionally you're and it really depends on your playthrough it'll just offer you this flaw and if he had taken that um he would have taken more damage from any canid that attacked him because he's terrified of canids but he would take more he would uh, be able to pick another perk immediately it's completely optional you can ignore the whole system if you want but personally i like the idea of a flawed hero and uh, we also increase the number of flaws you can take based off of the difficulty level yeah. so that on the hardest difficulties it is a more of a, you're more of a flawed and interesting yes. character. Yes. 
but it uh, should be a pretty fun thing to increase the difficulty for people. Oh, cool. Thank you for showing off the game, guys.